Using the first derivative test, we're able to find the local maximum and local minimum of a given function. Also, on the first derivative, we're able to determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing on a given interval. Now, for our lesson today, we're going to be using the second derivative test. And the second derivative test is helping you to find the concavity and the point of inflection of a given function. Now, what is concavity and how do you know if it's concave up or concave down? Now, using the second derivative, if f double prime of x is greater than 0, then the graph is said to be concave up. And if the second derivative is less than zero, then the graph is said to be concave down. Now, visually, this is how you visualize concavity in a given function. Now, this one is concave up because imagine you are trying to hold water in this particular curvature. You'll be able to hold water if it's concave up. Now, it's concave down if your curvature is going down right here. Now the water is going, or you're gonna empty your water right here, so that's why it's concave down. So that's how I remember if a function or a given graph is concave up, water is building, and concave down, water is emptying. So the point of inflection, it exists when there's two concavity that's changing in your given function. So in this particular illustration, the point of inflection where it's changing is on this particular point. Now, the point of inflection doesn't always exist. So sometimes in a given function, the point of inflection is nowhere to be found. An example of functions or graphical representation of functions that don't have a point of inflection will be a linear function and let's say a parabola. If you will notice, there's no concavity that will change from positive to negative in a linear function and also in your parabola. So in this particular cases, we're not going to be able to have point of inflection. Now, that's, or these conditions are the things that you need to think about when you're working with the second derivative. The point of inflection doesn't always exist in some functions. Now, let's have an example or a function wherein we're not seeing the graph and we are going to find out whether the concavity of the function is going up or going down. So, on my first example, we need to find the interval where the function is concave up and concave down. And we also need to determine if the point of inflection exists in this particular function. And the function that we're using will be x cubed minus 12x minus 5. Now we have some series of steps that we can organize so we can answer the following question right here in this particular fashion. Now step one is to find where the second derivative is equal to zero. So f double prime of x equal to zero will give us the critical number for this particular problem. So f of x, which is x cubed minus 12x minus 5, f prime of x, which is the first derivative, is equal to 3x squared minus 12, and f double prime of x is equal to 6x. Now we're not concerned about the first derivative right now because we're not being asked about the local minimum and maximum or the direction of our function. Since we're looking for concavity and the point of inflection, we're just going to focus on the second derivative and its critical number. So set your second derivative to 0, and 6x equal to 0 will give you x equal to 0. And this will be your critical number that you will use on your second step, which is constructing your sign chart to check whether the function has a concavity going up or going down. Now here's my sign chart, and I partition it into two. The critical number is at x equal to 0, so that means I'm going to check if the second derivative is positive for this interval or negative for the same interval. So for the first interval, I have negative infinity up until 0, and I'm going to use my second derivative to find out the value of my function. So for this example, x is equal to 0, I can use x equal to negative 1 or x equal to negative 2 and check whether my sign for my second derivative will be positive or negative if I plug it into my second derivative function. So I have f double prime of x or f double prime of negative 1 equal to 6 times negative 1 and it gives me a negative value. So therefore, my interval for negative infinity to 0 is giving me a concavity that's going down. So that's how we check 
the concavity of a given function using the second derivative. Now that we have found out the concavity of my first interval, let's find the concavity on my second interval, which is from 0 to positive infinity, using the same function, 6x, which is the second derivative, I will use positive 1 in this function to check whether it's positive or negative, and 6 times 1 will give me positive 6, which is a positive number. Therefore, I know that my concavity is going up from this interval 0 to positive infinity. Now, since my concavity is changing, I have concave down and concave up, I know that point or the point of inflection exists because I have two concavity. So for this third step right here, I just need to find that particular point in my graph where the point of inflection lies. So you're using the original function, which is f of x equal to x cubed minus 12x minus 5, to check for your point of inflection. So once again, to use or to find the point of inflection, you need to use your original function, which is x cubed minus 12x minus 5, and plug in the value of your critical number from your second derivative to check or to find out the point where the point of inflection lies. So f of 0 is equal to 0 cubed minus 12 times 0 minus 5. Therefore, f of 0 is equal to negative 5. So my point of inflection is at 0 and negative 5. So to answer the problem, the graph of f of x is concave up on 0 and positive infinity and concave down on negative infinity to 0. The point of inflection lies on the point 0 and negative 5. Now, if you're going to graph x cubed minus 12x minus 5, you will know that these steps, or the steps that we just did right here, make sense. And this is how the graph of this function look like. So if you'll notice, the point of inflection is right here, where the concavity is changing at 0 and negative 5. And we know that the function is concave down from 0 up until negative infinity and it's concave up because the water is filling in right here from 0 up until positive infinity. And that's how we use the second derivative to find the concavity and the point of inflection of a given function.